Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Kayong, the service engineer for this uh, D8 Advanced system. So right now, uh, in the morning, I'm going to introduce you the uh, the, system, the hardware for the system first. Then uh, for the data part, we I'm going to touch on the software side. Okay. Uh, firstly, I will touch on the the buttons and what are they for. Okay, so right now you are seeing this X3 on button. And this is the uh, icon button, which is saying that whether this is communicating with the PC or not. So right now, I will switch off the X-ray first, and then you can see these two X-ray lamps will turn off. And then from here, you can see the light on off button for the enclosure lights, which is LED. And then this is the door open button. When you press this, you hear click sound and then you can open the door so when you close it back you will not be able to open again so even if I turn on the x-ray so when x-ray is turned on the lights will turn back on and it will give a radiation yellow color so you can't open the door for safety reason so these two here are the e-stop button so in case of anything uh, you need to stop in Delhi you just hit this and the whole thing will shut down Okay, so right now uh, I can talk more about the interior part. So this is the uh, robot sample changer. There's a grabber here for you to grab the sample. So from here, this is the sample holder. Each holder you can hold about 15 samples. So you, you can just load the sample in and you put it in. So okay, you can see there's A, B, C, D and E, F. So you can put it in, you lock it, you can't move it. So how you remove it, you press again and you can take it out. Okay, so let me introduce you the... Okay, so for this enclosure it's special. It's very good because there are two mounting for you to put some of your accessories, your slits and right here Okay, so now this is the primary side and this is the secondary side. This is your sample stage. This is the tube mount where the x-ray tube is. And you can see that if you turn on x-ray, this x-ray on indicator will be lighted up. So when you when you're running measurement and the shutter is open, this shutter open indicator will light on. You'll be a red in color. So this is your primary optic box, which is the divergence slit. Uh, it's using those motorized slit where you can select your size. And this is the solar slit holder for this. And you can also put your nickel filter or your copper absorber. So this is the place where when the grabber grabs your sample, you will insert into here and this stage will rise up and your sample will be locked here. This is your secondary side with your secondary uh, optic box, which is the anti scatter box. And this is where your uh, anti scatter slits are. They are motorized as well. So all you have to do is just to control from the uh, software. This is the detector. Okay, this is an area detector. No, it's a 2D. Uh, it's not a point detector. It has, it has multiple strips inside, and so this is significantly faster than the point detector. This is called the lens eye XC. This is an upgrade of the lens eye. Uh, this is the the detector we are using now inside is just a normal scintillation counter. Okay, why is it called the XC? This is an improved version for the previous version of the lens eye where you do not need to put nickel filter to kill off the K beta. So whatever you have on your result, you will be only to see K alpha one and K alpha two. K beta will be automatically killed off. So that's why uh, actually you don't need to put any nickel filter on the slits mount here. Probably copper as well, you will not need it as well because it will kill off your intensity by quite, quite a lot. So um, I think that's all for the in, uh, internal side, internal closure, enclosure. Okay, so maybe I can talk more about the buttons here which is quite important 
Okay, firstly, let me off the X-ray first. Okay, right now you are seeing a blank white in color. Okay, this is in ready mode. So whenever the X-ray is, is off, you need to turn it on here. There's on the side panel, there's the off button as well. But I don't think you guys will off it, correct? It's more or less this X-ray will be on uh, in standby mode, 20 kV, 5 mA. So in any case, if this is off, you just need to press this button and this will turn on the X-ray. So right now, for this button, uh, the, we have a measurement server in here. We come to the screen now. This is being controlled by this icon here, measurement server. So what you can do is, you open up this server, you click on it, and this will set the server running. So right now you can see that it's loading all the configuration, the settings from the server and loading, talking, trying to establish a connection between the PC and the system. So when this is done, this will be green in color. So when the, this is green and this is yellow, you know that you can start your measurement anytime. Okay, so right now, when this is green in color, the measurement server will be white in color. I can double click on it and click on the status window. It will show the status as either. You can close it, but do not exit. If you press exit, you will disconnect the PC from the system and you can see that this button will turn white. So you can close but you don't exit it. So I will re-establish the communication between them. Okay, so when it's ready, the icon will appear on the, dust, the taskbar here. And then, on the taskbar itself, the, sh the shortcut is ready here. So for the for this new system, uh, there will be no more defect. Uh, there will be no more commander, uh, wizard. These two programs will be integrated into this program called Diffract Measurement. It's called Diffract Suite. So you will log in into the lab manager, and there's no password for this. But of course, if, if Melanto wants a password for it, we can set it and we can set for different level of login profile. So for my case here, I'll use the lab manager. I just click OK. And it's doing some initialization. It takes some time from here. Okay, this is the main uh, measurement software. So you can see that there's different tabs here. I'll go uh, tap by tap explaining what are they what is the purpose of it okay first uh, probably I can go to I will skip the wizard first and I'll come back to it later I will start with the commander this is the uh, uh, commander where you can do your manual measurement key in your settings man manually uh, you can see that the wizard and commander is incorporated into this software so in future you don't need to open up the wizard separately all will be done here so in the commander mode sample the position so right now you can only see the manual manual word is here so how do you load it using the sample robot it has sensors inside so once you load this sample holder in it automatically detect okay there's a sample holder here and it's at B so I should be able to see this D row in this sample position as you can see now there's this D row from 0, 1 all the way to 15 so this is where you click the position that your sample is in and you can run from there so for example let me select D5 and I will load a sample in a blank one okay so for this type of sample holder it's a round one so there's no direction as compared to the D5005 
So anytime you are done with your sample prep, you can just load it in. For in this case, I probably have to just put it at position five. Make sure it's sitting well so that the grabber will not have any uh, issue when grabbing it. Once it's done, you can put it in, lock it, and close the door. So right now, I'll go on to the commander and select the position, position 5, and I will load the sample. So you can see now, the grabber is grabbing the sample holder, going back, and putting it into the platform. Then the platform will rise up, and this will lock the sample. So from here onwards, you can do your measurements. The you can set your titer and two titer angle. Okay. Okay. So right now, if you saying that you want to measure your samples, all you need to do is to key in your start and your stop here, your increment time your increment degree sorry and then the the time that you want this is exactly the same as the uh, the old commander that you guys are used to and this scammer will be in continuously continuous so scan type actually uh, this new system allows you to do different option so we can do the uh, okay the most common one will be the couple two theta theta and then I have users asking for two titer, so meaning you you will fix your titer position and your two titer will be scanning. So I think these two are the most common. Yep. And when you are done with all the setting, you just need to press this start button. Anytime you wish to stop, you can press this stop, you go in your samples again, and you can press the resume button. It will not affect anything. So anytime you can uh, resume back. So there's this auto repeat function as well. Uh, when it, it obvious, uh, this is doing the auto repeat function. So if you need it, you can select this, and then you can see that this this is just to allow you the different scale for your x-axis. Oh, sorry, your y-axis. Counts, but okay. This is to toggle between CPS and counts. This is to sh just to play with the display grid with grid and without grid. Okay, okay. So, uh, what you see now, all this green tick, this means that the drive are being initialized. If it's not green, uh, it's giving an exclamation mark, it means the drive are not being initialized but not to worry because you will not be uh, switching off this instrument and this is being all done automatically so let's say whenever if you turn on the instrument the system will auto do a initialization before coming in so uh, I don't I think the old system does not does not do auto initialization so this is an improved one uh, <coughs> So let's say I try to uh, I'll do an unload first. Okay. So for example, uh, if you wish to change the position here, you will not be allowed to because why? This is being blocked by the sample changer because the system know that you are using the sample robot you will not be able to move the titer independently so let's say I want to change it to 40 so I just check it and I can just say position all check drive this is the initialized all check drive so you see what happened when I click position the titer to 40 degrees it will say 
error internal error drive is internally locked this is like what i say this thing is being controlled by a simple robot it does not allow you to perform this uh this procedure independently so everything is being controlled so you can only do your loading do your settings here and you start and you auto go to the angle unless you really need to do manually you can do it as well so you put in your sample you just uh go through the same thing load manual and then after that you can key in the different angle for the heater and detector only when it really works so actually i do not encourage you guys to use the manual everything will be automated okay so now i will go on to the okay so from here we can see that you can see the detector the detector angle and then the phi which is the rotation of the sample you can select the speed per minute how many rotations per minute and then of course this is the motorized primary speed where you can select in mm so uh, let's say okay because right now the left hand side column is the current setting so if you want to set to 0 0.1 just key in here i will uncheck this i will check this box and i will set click on this button send changes to the instrument so you can see that in the left column is being shown 0 0.1 same goes for the secondary optic box. It's using the motorized lead and right now it's open fully 9mm. If you need to change it, you can just put 0 0.6. Check the box. Uncheck this. Send changes to the instrument. When it is giving a green tick, you can see that <coughs> showing 0 0.6 here on the left hand column so many yet these two are done and you can go on to the voltage and current same thing right hand side for you to key in left hand side showing the current setting 40 40 and i press the set button So 4040 will be 1600 watts. This is the X-ray turn on. So you can off it by here as well. And then this is the shutter. So this is now closed. And later when you are doing the measurement, it will become open. Yeah, in fact I can turn, I can open the shutter now. You can hear the shutter ticking now. And from now, you can see that it's red in color. Wait. And now I will show you what if I open the door. Immediately the shutter cuts off. So when it close back, the shutter will turn back on again. So this is where your measurement will start to resume back uh, from where it's left off. Okay, I forgot to mention something about that. The tube is being pulled by water chiller outside. So the water chiller is a new one, but it's a two pump sharing between these two systems. So this is not changed. The principle is still the same, it's cooling down the X-ray system. So the water chiller is very important. And then put it back. Okay. For this commander, it's behaving exactly the same like the old commander. After when the measurement is done, five minutes standby time. No, after five minutes, the voltage and current will go to the standby settings, which is 25. So the standby uh, timing, I can set it. Uh, the default is 600 seconds, meaning well, 300 seconds, meaning 5 minutes. So this is the same for the old D5000 software, D5005. Let me pull the shutter, set it back to 25. Okay, this is just to show you the at the tube side this is to show you the tube info 
there's nothing you can do with it except because it's reading in the info from the tube. And that detector, you can you can choose to run at zero D mode, which is a point detector. So this will behave exactly the same as the simulation copper. So I don't think you guys will need it because it will defeat the purpose of getting a inside a 1D detector. Okay, let me go to this interesting function. This is called the Darwin tree. This system is very smart, I can say, because, okay, I can go back to the system now. Okay, for example, if I take out this array of things, you can see that there is some chips here. So the, what is this? This is the component recognition, component recognition. And when you take it out, it knows that there's no uh, pyramid of peaks here. So it will then reflect in this real time LVG. You can see that position two is empty. So if I put it back again, it will be showing pyramid of peaks box. So you can see that the pyramid of the box is a setting of 0.06 opening. So all the parts here is being recognized, including the X-ray tube. This is why we have a lot of files for the X-ray tube. We can know at what power is running and how many hours is running. So when is it going to stand by? So if we have any fault in the tube, we can check back the log file. See the history of the tube. The same goes for the uh, the secondary box here or the the stick mount here for copper filter or for uh, the nickel filter. You can see even the extra solar at number four. If I take out and put it in, you can even know the opening two point five degrees. Okay, most of the parts will be shown on the WG except the uh I think this is which is for low low angle scan from probably from one to ten degrees. Later I will I will show you the knife H which will be put here. This doesn't have any component resolution, it doesn't have any chip. So for that you have the, the you have to check it physically. So if there's a mismatch, 
he doesn't allow you to run your method. It will in the uh, start job we have this validate experiment. So when when you check this box, when you run the wizard, immediately it will compare the wizard Da Vinci setting with the real time Da Vinci setting. If there's mismatch, it will put a cross at the this position valid. So from from there it will show you what is wrong, and you can physically go to the uh, oh no sorry go to the commander or physically and do the settings over here. Probably most in this case most likely is your sleep sleep opening is wrong because I don't see a problem with the detector and detector angle. Most likely you encounter problem with the sleep width for both the primary optics. So for this right, you have to probably be careful a bit at this side. So you need to choose depending. You can select the the indices or the MM. So in this case, just put zero point six. Okay. And then for the secondary, I can put. I will put back nine a full opening. Why I choose a a full opening of the my detector? Because as I say, a lens actually has hundred ninety two strip. If you set the detector slit size at the secondary side, you'll be closing fully to the angle. But if you set it to zero point one, you you will left with just zero point one opening, and you will defeat the purpose of the whole whole scanning of the higher and lower strips. So this will become a point detector again. So no point selecting the strip size for this. So what I can recommend is open full, and you can make use of the full higher and lower strips for the inside. I've got a question. Oh, what if I accidentally key in some very big number? Does it auto detect, or you just follow? For this, yeah. or for for all the things that we need to key, is there the range? Yeah, you, you can see if I put there, yeah, there's a range, okay. nine point five. So all, if you do not understand or you do not know what is that for, you can just put your cursor over there, and you will probably you will just show you the a lot of values. Yeah, nine point five. So the speed size. So after everything you set, you can proceed to next. The W two settings were modified, so press OK, so that your W two setting will be safe. Okay, so now this is the very very basic one. You can key in your sample ID, and you can if you have any comments about this wizard, you can just key in here. Then you can just go to next. Okay, these are all the info, like example the detector use and the tube use. So uh, scan type mode. Okay, because all these are by default, but you can change all these later in the setup. So I can go to XRD setup. Okay, this is the the important one that you key in your your time and then your start and stop. Plus the increment. After you have done all this, you calculate the steps and the estimated time. So, uh, if you need the the fine to rotate, you need to put this oscillate, and then you can put the speed, how many per minute, or you can go by amplitude or position. After that. You can just go to next. This is sort of pre-measurement, so I do not think you guys really need this. Because the most important thing is to set up this, and you can just go to save, then immediately go to the job list and go to an instrument and start to run. Yeah. So uh, after this is this page is done, you just need to go to save as. So uh, for this PC, the default folder will be in. This my documents has been set by Madam Tong. So uh, okay, the new uh, 
extension file for experiment is BSML, not DQL anymore. So you definitely can't go in the DQL into here because there's this W3 here, so it will not match. We have already tried that, it doesn't work. So anything you save will be as BSML. So this is done, I can go to the start job. So for the start job, first I have to select the sample position and then your sample ID, your experiment name, your method where we save it just now. Test. So right now it's validating experiment. So it's matching the two W3. If everything's okay, you will put a valid tick, green tick here, and then we go on to the results file name. We save it in the desktop, my document as well. So uh, as for results file, it's called BRML, but of course you can. Oh no, it doesn't allow you to save as raw file. Okay, for measurement running on wizard, it only allows you to save in .brml. Let's say what if you already die die you need raw file or raw text. Commander, after you have finished your result, go to file, save result file. If you are really doing the wizard, you can't really save that stock raw or dot raw text. Okay, so going back to the wizard, we will be saving this state file. Oh, okay, we have already saved it as dot .bsml. Most important thing is this XRD setup, where you can select all your info here. 